Welcome to the Investor News. In this video, Rick Rule talks about maintaining liquidity, avoiding long-term investments, and investing in gold or silver due to inflation and quantitative easing. Uh, you need to maintain liquidity. You need to maintain U.S. dollar liquidity if you live in the United States, but you need to maintain it in short-term durations. Don't be a yield whore. Uh, don't put your money out in five or six year term for 10 or 15 basis points. Have the maturities either demand maturities. Listen, there's plenty of banks out there that are paying three, three and a half percent on demand deposits or in very short term treasuries. Anybody can set up a treasury direct account uh, and lend their money directly to the U.S. government in maturities less than a year. Restrict your maturities, maintain liquidity, but and do this in the next 60 or 90 days. If you don't own physical gold or silver, <laughs> if you don't have an insurance policy, put your insurance policy in place, not with 100% of your portfolio, but with enough money that you sleep nights and stay calm. My nervousness isn't about the solvency of the banking system. My nervousness is about the response of the Fed to problems in the banking system. Uh, my suspicion is as the strains in credit markets increase as liquidity decreases the policy response from the government will be to increase quantitative easing quantitative easing is government speak for counterfeiting you'll notice that they provided 200 billion dollars in backstop for the banking system without going to the credit markets to borrow it or without increasing taxes that meant that they counterfeited it uh, creating new specious currency units does not increase the value of existing currency units. It decreases them. And my suspicion is that if the current difficulties that we see in credit markets, including the current liquidity continues, that the Fed will do whatever it can to lower interest rates. If the market sees a continued conjunction of lower nominal interest rates, lower real interest rates, and increasing counterfeiting, that circumstance is tailor-made for the precious metals market. If you look right now at the arithmetic around the competition for gold and silver, which is the U.S. 10-year treasury, the U.S. 10-year treasury pays you a little bit less than 4% in a currency that the government acknowledges is losing 7% of its purchasing power compounded, which means if you lend the government money for 10 years, they solemnly promise to pay you, uh, well, let me put it differently, they solemnly promise to reduce your spending power by 3% a year compounded for 10 years. That's what gold is competing with. If the real yield continues to decline, that is to say, if there is declining nominal interest rates in the face of continued inflation, and by the way, quantitative easing causes continued inflation, I think you're gonna see massive disintermediation from all kinds of long bonds. And disintermediation is a fancy way of selling, say of, say, say of selling, uh, and a redeployment to other assets, including very short-term denominations and gold and silver. The, uh, <laughs> the bottom line of the diatribe that you just heard is to the extent that you haven't invested in gold or silver and you or you're underinvested in gold and silver, this is a wonderful time to increase your allocation, not at the expense of your other liquidity but particularly at the expense of bond holdings that you may have or savings products that have durations longer than two years. I think we will head into a super cycle, although I'm not convinced that we'll head into it in the next two or three years. The thing that derails a super cycle is of course a recession and we need an economic slowdown. I think in an economic slowdown, what you'll find is that commodities are already cheap. So they don't get proportionally more cheap compared to assets that aren't cheap now. But if you look beyond the next recession, uh, we have underinvested in natural resources for 30 years. We are going to have supply shortages, and we're going to have supply shortages throughout <laughs> the natural resources space. Uh, I'm an icon for copper mines. I'm old. I'm past my prime. <laughs> Most of the copper mines that we're living on worldwide were discovered 60 and 70 years ago. Bingham Canyon's 155 years old. Chuki Kamada's 115 years old. Grassberg's 60 years old. These mines are past their prime, they're long of tooth. Uh, meanwhile, demand for copper is exploding. Uh, we're gonna have to pay the piper in higher copper prices, in higher cobalt prices, in higher zinc prices, uh, in higher oil and gas prices, uh, all of these things. You can have 
declining supply if you have a recession or a depression and declining demand. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. But I'm a real bullish person in terms of the ultimate future of humankind. We've done a wonderful job as a species over the last 40 years, lifting the poorest of the poor out of dire poverty. And hopefully we continue to do that. Poor people want to live like you and I, and you and I want to live better. And all of that, the raising of material living standards of 8 billion of us on earth require more resources. This requirement for more resources is going to run head on into declining sustaining capital investments in resource industries and 30 years of underinvestment in resource industries. This is a wonderful circumstance for myself and other resource investors and a somewhat more challenging uh, climate for consumers, <laughs> people who want to increase their material standards of living. Uh, I've been a major beneficiary of silver, <laughs> of the volatility and the cyclicality of silver and the fact that most people who speculate in silver misunderstand the nature of that market uh, and understanding a little bit when most people don't understand very much at all is a huge competitive advantage. Silver is described as the poor man's gold, uh, which is to say because of its lower unit cost, it's accessible to more people. It's sort of democratized gold. And what that means is that after a, the primary trend has been established higher in a precious metals bull market, established by the way, the momentum by gold, the second half of a precious metals bull market is usually dominated by silver. It has more volatility to the upside. Uh, why that is, I'm not exactly sure. I spent 50 years trying to figure it out. I'm just sure that it is, not exactly why it's sure. But let's look at a few reasons. And let's look at some of the things that we plan to cover in the Silver Investors Bootcamp. You go first of all to supply and demand, and both are very tough to understand with regards to silver. Much of the silver that's ever been mined is still supply. <laughs> we take it out of a hole in the ground called a mine. We put it in a hole in the ground called a vault. So it isn't, you don't analyze supply the same way that you might oil or copper, which gets used. The other thing about supply that's really interesting is about 18% of primary silver supply comes from silver mines. The rest comes from recycling uh, and as a consequence of byproduct from base metals mines. So to get some sense of what silver supply looks like five years from now, you have to have an opinion as to what the copper price is going to be, as an example, right. or what the gold price is going to be. So it's very difficult to understand the supply side. But one of the strangest things about the supply side is that much of the supply is hidden. Uh, a whole bunch of people who save their wealth in silver, particularly in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka, don't particularly want the government to know about their savings. The consequence of that is that we really don't know how much above ground silver supply there is. If I might digress, going back to the days when Buffett announced that he was long silver, you may remember that the silver price went up a lot and then the silver price collapsed. And of course, all the conspiratorialists said that this was the international Jewish conspiracy and the, you know, the United Nations and the Bilderbergers and all that. What actually happened, we think, is that the silver price went up in U.S. dollar terms, the rupiah fell by half in U.S. dollar terms, and there was a bad harvest, which meant that the silver price quadrupled in rupiah terms at the same time that the Indian peasantry had a need for cash. Silver fulfilled its role and silver came out of India into the world market, collapsing the silver price. This is perversely one of the reasons why I like silver, because so many people who try to understand it don't know very much about the fundamentals. It's difficult to understand supply. It's difficult to understand demand. What isn't difficult to understand is favor. Even the people who like silver are disappointed by the lack of momentum that silver has exhibited over the last three or four years. In order to be a speculator, in order to buy low and sell high, you have to buy assets that are out of favor. And when I look back at history, when I look at where the silver price could go and where the silver equities prices could go, I have to say there's absolutely no premium built into the silver market, which is to say that I get both the narrative and the history for free. People are excited in the last two weeks because the silver price is up two bucks, two bucks. 
If you look back at a history of the silver price going back to 1970, you'll see that $2 is an irrelevancy. The silver price can gain or lose $2 in a week simply by inhaling and exhaling. The price of silver was a buck 20. And in that market, it peaked at $50, okay? $50. Fast forward to the next silver market that I enjoyed with Quartermain and Beatty and all my sort of comp compatriots. The silver price had fallen to, I think it was $4. And it went from $4 to $50. Not as dramatic a bull market as the first one, but plenty good enough for me, thank you. Um, if you look at a long-term chart of the silver price, what you see is that it rewards you infrequently, and it rewards you from bases where it has been despised. But when it rewards you, it rewards you extravagantly. And at age 70, well, almost, uh, at age 70, I look forward to one more rip-roaring bull market in silver. I believe that negative real interest rates will cause us to have a rip-roaring gold market. I believe that the momentum will be established by the gold market. And I believe that the logical conclusion about that based on history is that towards the middle and end of that bull market, that silver will outperform gold. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time, they get your life. You are not even in a rat race, you're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? How should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave. You forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address, and I see you on the other side. Your Marcus Dan.